Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Always wish you a happy Wednesday. What is it, Wednesday or Thursday? Whatever fucking day it is, man. Just another bad hair day for me is what it really is. Also in need of a major shave. But you know what? As always, want to be wishing you well and a nice little snowy day over here. But today is actually a very important day as SIBO futures are expiring. So we have a few things to talk about. I do believe that we're probably going to see some volatility coming to the market. And let's just shuffle on over into the live scene right over here. As Bitcoin getting, getting rejected from this area that we spoke about yesterday, uh, I believe on stream, I was looking for a move back up in a low 3600s that is exactly what i was looking for right there and uh, so far rejected however this is a daily and we got a lot of time left on the daily to go of course but i just wanted to note that bitcoin as long as it is between really the 21 exponential moving average which is around 3540 and the green 55 exponential moving average which is around 55 or sorry 3700 jesus christ bad slip of tongue right there you can make it as easy as uh, as easy as you want and that's you know really all you have to really look at right now now of course we come here to actually do some technical analysis, get deep down and dirty because you, like me, are probably autistic and want to look at these charts, or you just like hearing me go on autistic rants. But fair enough, I'll take the, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the, the, the bad moniker for the team, and let's just put in some nice trend lines. So let's just represent this guy right here at 35, uh, 20, 35, 30, and make it a zone. As always, I want to be representing things as a zone. And this guy uh, right here at 35, 50, exactly, which we have two spikes down so far. Both were bought up pretty fast. But just like the spikes down here were bought up fast, the any move above about 36.30 was sold pretty quickly as well. So we do have a nice trend line right in this area around 36.50 uh, we'll call it. And of course, we want to just take it one step further, mark off this area to the downside at 30, uh, what is it, 34.69 down around here. And let's actually put on some some diagonal trend lines now as going all the way back on over here to the late November area and dragging this guy for uh, further and across we do see that we have our our lower highs being governed by this trend line it has been valid for the last almost three months and still looking like it's being respected and then we have this newfound trend line from coming from the coming from the prior bottom to our current uh, our current rally which I do believe that this is the right way to be representing this price action the reason why I say that is because look at the volume coming off this trend line down here here. That tells me that someone's paying attention to it, and that tells me that this is the right way to be representing this price action for now, which again is still very corrective in nature. The structure is extremely corrective, lower highs, and coming into a, a nice triangle of consolidation. The volume signature is also incredibly is is confirming that fact. You know that nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right, as you can see over there. I'm going to take this trend line off right now, though. But again, telling us that you know we really haven't seen any major break out or breakdown out of this formation, and with that you know in mind, I do go with the former trend, which has been. Down, and it's been down for literally over a year now. So nothing's changed in quite literally over a year. We are just having another major consolidation as it stands. Again, doesn't mean that it can't change, but understand the areas where it does change. Otherwise, you might get swept up in the hopium uh, induced in, in the hopium induced uh, slumber party that's going on right now, which I call top bucket. But <laughs> without all jokes aside, you know this area right here, thirty-seven would be the daily fifty-five exponential. As long as Bitcoin is below there, we, have, we haven't seen literally anything different, even from the very low time frames. Now, we'll even extend this out upwards to higher time frames, but of course, lower time frames, not even breaking anything that major. And this triangular consolidation does have, by the way, an apex coming in at the beginning of March. Now, why do I think that this is relevant? Well, as these things get more and more full, they become more and more likely to break. And in fact, the rule kind of is, is that as, as soon as you get about 69% full, you can bust at any moment in time or 70% 70, 70 full but I like 69 because it's a better number. And you can see that we are probably around that area right now. And after getting rejected from this overall resistance, I would be looking for this to, well, now go test some supports more likely. Just like over here, you tested support, now you go test resistance. And now we are back right in the middle after what looks to me to be a rejection off of this trend line, then this horizontal, and then once again in the early morning hours um, as I was waking up right here at the uh, 36, 36.30ish uh, 36 area. So again, we do have our lower time frame also. This is a four hour Stokes, actually still pointed up um, quite fair enough. However, the very low, like the two hour and the one hour are crossing down. Two hours actually snaking around right at the edge of the bullish control zone. So to me, that is, you know, that uh, that could very easily turn into a snake. Uh, one hour over here actually is headed healthily down and getting reject from the bullish control zone. But again, you know, does, you know, <laughs> I don't really like to live on the lower time frames. It is interesting to look at but looking at this price action right now i mean there's <laughs> 
it's kind of like splitting hairs, right? What I really want to be looking at is something like a 12 hour and above. And the 12 hour is quite simple, actually. The 12 hour has gotten a clear rejection on that last wick all the way to the cyan 89 exponential right there. And it's obvious sell pressure coming down in. Now, of course, it's still a three, a little bit over three hours left to go. So a lot, a lot of things can happen in about three hours of time in cryptocurrency land. That's a fucking eternity. But for now, it is a rejection and is to be considered um, and is to be treated as such. Uh, not only that, but there's something very interesting on my Stokes over here, which again, I do have special settings on this, but we are finding resistance right along where right along the the edge of the bullish control zone or right at the top or sorry right at the bottom of the bullish control zone and not only that but we do have a nice ascending trend line governing one two three highs you'll notice that this high over here actually goes goes back to the late december when bitcoin tried to rally up to 4200 on the first initial dead cat bounce um then we put in the second high here in G uh, at early january january 8th and that was the run up to about 4100 or so and once again we've actually met this trend line which is getting slow slowly slowly ground down which tells me that the bears are slowly but surely taking over in this consolidation and as long as we are living within the bounds of this i do interpret that, that as likely you know uh, good enough for a trade and i actually did take a trade on my main account my streamer account i was not you know my streamer account i don't like leaving um positions in overnight and in order to really get this i would have had to have left one um overnight and i don't i, I really don't like doing that because that account only has about you know uh, i i think probably have like six bitcoin in there right now because i keep on taking them out um and so, you know, margin requirements are concerned. So if Bitcoin were to like run against me, it's like, I just don't want to deal with that with my main account. You know, I can always cover cover in the morning with options pretty easily. And that's not a concern. But for for what we're looking at right now, um, you know, that was not worth it. I would take another position or would take a position on my streamer account if we do break 3550. But for now, it's pretty much completely neutral. And I don't really have any intent to take a position unless if I get another try up here, which I if, if we if we actually work back up our way to 3650 3700ish area i think we actually break it to the upside to be quite fair so I, you know while i would take a position there just because it's a good risk reward opportunity i think that if this thing is going to actually break down it's going to head below 3550 first rather than uh rather than test this area i believe that that was tried in the early morning hours and that's what we just saw rejected or rejected so far again not necessarily confirmed uh fully just yet so again um looking at the, you know i, I think it's uh, the higher time frame that you go the more and more visually apparent it does become that that last pump on last friday was very low volume and just in the overall context of this to be considered again as consolidation it fits with the overall structure of this price it fits with the volume signature it fits with if we bring on the high uh the high um sorry the historical volatility rank and holy moly man who was that welcome stephen mullins good to meet you man good to have you in here it's gonna be cool to uh, to watch this later because then you'll be able to like you know we'll be able to meet each other anyways uh yeah on 12 hour you do see historical volatility rank just having another spike up in in the context of this as well you do see a nice trend line coming all the way down here essentially and what does that tell me well it tells me that that that's just filling out the space of this again triangular consolidation again coming off of a major downtrend typically more often than not that's going to be a bearishly resolved uh, consolidation of course i've seen every fucking consolidation broken in you know every way that's not supposed to except to, like to the left side <laughs> i haven't seen that one yet um but confirmation on that would be breaking the lower the lower support of the uh, of, of the uh, triangle that we're working on right now um i would imagine though according to this i don't think that that happens uh i don't think that happens actually this week i think that that's it's probably going to take another week or so i think bitcoin's going to spend some time going sideways and just frustrating people more you're probably going to see this tail off just a little bit more and it looks to be to be that on the higher time frames once we get down to this lower end that's where the big moves happen and uh, we still have some time to put in so Again, it's been about a three. It's been about three months within this consolidation, and looking at that does tell me that you know we, we could certainly spend a little bit more time within this area. Again, an apex at March 9th is what I have for Bit Mexico, and I would imagine that that um, you know that is uh, that uh, that is my general disposition is wait you know wait it out if whichever one breaks first, essentially 3700 or down here to 3350, that's going to be the next big play. Now I know people are also representing the the overhead resistance, something like this. Which is that right? Is that wrong? I would say it it's possible. So if Bitcoin does break out to the upside at above uh, what is it 3650, 3700 area, then yeah, I start looking towards 3800, 30 you know basically 38. 
5850, which would also be the breakdown point off of this symmetrical triangle uh, that we put in at the end of um, uh, the end of December, early January, and that would be right around there now, wouldn't it? So again, if Bitcoin does break up to the uh, if, if Bitcoin does break 3700, then the next kind of area that I have on the table is about 3850 to 3900, and my personal opinion is that you'd probably actually initiate a run all the way to 4000 at that point. Um, am I leaning towards that happening? I I want to be more agnostic than anything in this range, but I do think that it is less likely. I mean, you know, anytime we're in an overall bear market, I'm always going to side with the bears just because that's a side that's been winning for over a year. So <laughs> more often than not, it's going to, you know, it's, it's going to go down. Um, so when in doubt, you know, short it out, as they say. So uh, this symmetrical triangle, by the way, still does have a measure move that actually has not been necessarily fulfilled as of yet. It is pointing all the way down to basically our former low at uh, 3250, which is, you know, very much uh, valid as long as we are living below the breakdown point of the symmetrical triangle, which again is all the way at 3850. So Bitcoin has a lot of work to do if it wants to, um, if you know, if, 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 if it wants to actually negate this. Um, but again, you know, if Bitcoin does take out 3700 I, I think that it probably does shoot through this area yeah maybe it you know maybe it sells off on the first pass maybe it's worth the scalp but I, my opinion is that you'd probably you know have a run over to 4000 uh, by the same token this area that we're currently looking at is of great importance this 3700 area because not only is it this downtrend resistance um, line that we've been looking at for quite some time and also this horizontal trend line over here at 3650 uh, but it's also something very important as well it is the monthly green 55 exponential if I can bring it up and and here it is on the BLX index. You see this green 55 exponential coming in right around 3670. And that is pretty much, you know, within the realm. It doesn't need to be perfect. But my point is, is that Bitcoin actually broke this for the first time in its history, uh, literally ever. Uh, again, not, you know, that's more of a testament to the fact that Bitcoin's on the younger side. You know, he's just a baby. And we have only just come back and retested it and so far rejected from it which is very common to do. I mean, it's, it's very common. So when people are looking at this as a breakout rally, I don't even see a breakout on the lower timeframes, but speaking of the higher timeframes and monthly um, like this, uh, right now we are living below that. And that is, there is obvious sell pressure around that area um, as it stands. So again, I'm not saying that Bitcoin can't break above 3,700, but just understand from the monthly dildo timeframe that as long as you are below 3,700 or closing the monthly dildo below 3,700, essentially, uh, this is going to be interpreted as a confirmed kill of this moving average by end of month if we end anywhere below that area. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that uh, that does not discount the fact that Bitcoin can very easily actually have a wick above. In fact, we already do have a wick above, a small wick, uh, <laughs> a, little, 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 a little baby wick, about 60 bucks above. But um, as you saw over here, you know, this was a nice rejection. So as long as we're living below the high of this former wick and closing the monthly total below this green 55 exponential, that is going to be a confirmed kill of both opening and closing the first monthly dildo ever below the green 55 exponential, which at that point in time, I would start looking towards this area here, this 89 exponential, this cyan coming in right around 2450, 2400 ish area, which does line up with a lot of projections um, for the downside that I'm looking at. If Bitcoin is to break basically the 200 simple moon average, which is coming in around uh, 30, let's put it on and let's actually confirm this. Uh, basically, whichever one happens first, whether the daily closes below 3350 or the weekly closes below 3330, actually, it's rising quite rapidly, uh, basically the 200 simple right there. Um, but if I put back all my drawing tools, if that were to happen, then I look towards, again, the 89 exponential on the monthly, which would also be encompassed by this blue box territory that I have between about 2300 and 2600. That's also the 886 Fibonacci retracement, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 over here. We do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area. And if we do put on, if we do throw on the volume profile, you can see very easily that uh, there's some very high value nodes being done in this area, very thick AF. And you also notice that as soon as, you know, even the volume profiles agreeing with this, that as soon as you lose essentially the 200 simple, uh, there ain't nothing doing all the way down to the, like the mid to low uh, 200s. So, or sorry, yeah, sorry, the, the mid to low 2000s, which again, re, uh, let me remind you what happens when you have this sort of lack of volume, this lack of market acceptance essentially is, well, you get something like we had over here at 6,000, breaking all the way down to high 3000s, pretty much instantaneously. I mean, yes, it was it was initiated over the course of about two, three weeks. But remember, you know, when we're talking about technical analysis, when we're talking about these higher timeframes, that is relatively extremely fast. And something that I think really gets a lot of people off their guard, because I talk about these ideas and I do these videos every day, and it might sound like 
like something's happening like now when I say that, but understand relatively speaking, when I'm saying soon, I mean within two weeks to a month, um, most likely when looking at a time frame like this, which is what I'd pretty much stick towards. Um, anyways, uh, we also have the 377 exponential coming in around this area, the blue moving average basically right and smack dab in the middle as well. So a lot of things agreeing that if Bitcoin does break down from this 200 simple, uh, that's likely the next, uh, the, the, uh, the next target. Does that mean it's going to be the ultimate low? Nope. I need to see the reaction first, but as you know, as, as, as we saw coming off of this guy, all I need, you know, I need to see a reaction first before I can call a reversal. And it was very visually apparent that after the first two weeks off of this low, I mean, even when we still, when, when we first got down into it, it was pretty, you know, it was pretty questionable. Um, but even, you know, even after the first two weeks, it was very visually apparent that this was not a reversal. This was more of a consolidation, a little bit of a dead cat bounce, which really is, I mean, you really would have wanted to have seen it give another try actually to the 200 exponential moving average, which brings me to my next point. Um, as you know, from a high time frame perspective, remember, Bitcoin has a lot of work to do. If it's going to, if it's going to basically turn me into a bottom is in guy like bro bottoms in you know that kind of shit um until that in, until that happens i need to see a weekly total both opening and closing above the 200 exponential moving average which is again right around 4120 so understand that that the lower time frames have not signaled anything different that you know when we looked at the four hour the eight hour the 12 hour nothing different there then we looked at the daily i mean nothing really different there the monthly also showing resistance has well is resisting right now and of course the higher time frames you know like a weekly showing you can get all the way up back up to this 200 exponential moving average but as long as you're both opening and closing weekly deals below this i really don't have any reason to believe that the low is in again the reason why i run with that assumption is because bitcoin is zero for five and all the things that i look for to denote a major mark cycle bottom um which i go through in depth on the long-term analysis video so check out the playlist titled long-term analysis if you want the uh, if, if you want like a hour-long explanation of that with examples but i'll just kind of briefly run over it now uh volume's not good on the low the percent the the time spent at, at the low is not good enough or is, is too long more more importantly the reaction off the low is not consistent with the way that Bitcoin plays out its its mark cycle lows, the 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 return back to the low within about five percent of the low so far is very questionable as well. The high uh, the historical volatility, uh, volatility rank not signaling a low. The MBT signal, which has never been wrong in denoting a major mark cycle low, also not giving us a low either. So zero for, for actually six uh, is not good enough for me. So if you know, I, I would kind of accept that I'd be wrong on that idea. If Bitcoin were to pop back above the 200 exponential. Uh, and close and, and open and close a dildo above there until that happens. That's that's the assumption that I'll be running with um, due to that reason. So again, turn that guy off and let's see what else do we want to talk about. Uh, let's go look at GBDC. GBDC is very interesting right now. Very, very interesting because GBDC actually looks quite bullish. Uh, we had a bear trap on GBDC actually making just a slightly, uh, slightly lower low and then immediately rallying back on Friday. Very powerful rally. And once again, we are right back in this range. Now, this is this is very interesting to me because to me, it actually looks like we are creating some sort of a descending triangle on GBDC, a formal descending triangle with uh, with a very nasty bear trap uh, on, on that last February, uh, early February low, kind of like what we saw on Bitcoin spot charts uh, around 6,000 where, you know, Bitcoin comes down and then actually, you know, puts in a dead cat bounce then actually makes a slightly lower low, right, right below 6,000, then, you know, plays out some more bounceage, so to, uh, so to speak. And you can see that this ascending triangle uh, does have an apex all the way in April. So it is disagreeing with um, with spot charts right now as far as the overall structure, but still in bearish posturing. And as far as the volume characteristics go, this is, again, once again, you know, um, a, a nice orderly drop off in volume within the context of lower highs and a triangular descending formation, which typically speaking is going to be... Hmm, well, typically speaking, that is going to be a bearishly resolved consolidation. So we are once again brushing up against this area. And as long as we're below $4.40, uh, let's just call it four fifty, dollars just, just to be like extra conservative on this. Um, as long as we're below four fifty, dollars it's... That's that's the assumption that I'll be running with. If we actually do start breaking this area, which is also the 89 exponential, which you can see that's been actually governing this uh, the, these highs going down here. Um, I will be running with that assumption. If it breaks above, then... 
could actually initiate a pretty powerful run back up to about 525, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, you do have some resistances along the way, but I, uh, again, just like Bitcoin, if Bitcoin were, were to break its current resistance at 30, uh, 3,700, I think that it probably runs to 4,000 or you know around that area. Uh, same thing with GBTC over here. So again, I'm not necessarily leaning towards that happening, and we actually do have our medium time oscillators uh, starting to signal a little bit of a uh, little bit, a little bit of exhaustion. We got four hour stokes over here. Two hour stokes are probably already. Oh, they actually uh, snaked back up. Uh, what about hourly? Hourly is going to be coming back up. So yeah, actually, sorry, lower time frame oscillators are signaling up. Uh, what about our high? Uh, what about our semi high? Semi high. Uh, eight hour. Yeah, everything's actually everything's actually up right now uh, for GBDC. So again, GBDC is does does want to go up gbdc did just pop back down to the 21 exponential that was a buy and i'd imagine that we have we taken up the high of the prior we have not but right there uh this this to me you know if i'm just looking at gbdc i'd be i'd be saying i would be very cautious of spot charts right now because gbdc wants to go up as far as i see it uh crypto and uh, or sorry the the major mark caps and uh, and bitcoin himself look to me like a rejection more uh uh, more accurately speaking. So again, a um, little bit of dissenting opinions between these two charts, actually. Which one do I put more weight on? Well, uh, traditionally speaking, GBDC has been leading spot charts for the last, you know, over a year. So if, take that as you will. Um, let's go check out the higher time frames, though, on Mr. Bitcoin. Mr. Bitcoin, uh, daily stokes getting all the way back up here again, getting all the way to the uh, to the edge of the bullish control zone. If we end here or higher by end of day, then we actually will have a, uh, you know, we, uh, we actually will be in that area. But if we actually do make the same sort of trend line that we did for the 12 hour, but with regards to the to the daily, we have this trend line going all the way back over to the or sorry September September of 2018, which we are currently meeting for the uh, for for the third time. Three times does make a trend, and if the, and if we do you know find resistance here, then that is likely to be our governing factor. I'd imagine. Um, do we can we go any further back? Probably not. No, it's. Um, so again, keep that in mind. There are a lot of things within this area. Now, two-day stokes are going to be headed up, but they are getting right to the edge of the bearish control zone. So again, it's it's it, this this makes it difficult. This makes it very difficult because we also do have hidden bearish divergence on the two-day little time frame right here between this point and this point. This was uh, this was your January high, and this is the high that we just put in so far, and also rejection of the 21 exponential as it stands. If we do end the two-day dolo here today, yeah, we'll be ending on 14th. We will uh, we will get a new one later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. This will be considered by me, uh, you know, another rejection of the 21 and probably likely to, you know, to test some supports after that. Let's put on the 10 simple. I'm guessing that's probably where our, our preliminary support is going to be, and that's all the way down around here right around 3480 which would obviously come with a breakage of our current like midline which I'm which I'd be making decisions uh, based off of which is currently 35 50 to 35 uh, 30 uh, essentially a zone as uh, as supporting resistance really should be so again um, we do have you know there, there certainly are things Amongst all, you know, uh, um, amongst our different time frames, are actually disagreeing with each other right now, which does make this difficult. But when in doubt, I do, you know, I, I go with the downside just because that's, again, that's <laughs> we're in a fucking bear market, man. Um, three day over here, three day actually did have a cross the upside on the Stokes, which is which should be very concerning because every time that this thing actually does cross big price action typically ensues. I mean, the last time we actually had a cross uh, was putting in this this pounce over here. So again, uh, Jewel telling you about the actual low, pretty much perfectly on the low. Jesus Christ, man. A little bit, got it better on the daily, actually. By the way, I should let everyone know, I actually did make, um, so, so the Jewel now does have payment options for up to a nine month payment plan. I probably will end up regretting that, but at the same point in time, I do wanna make, I do wanna make it available for the people who really do want it. Um, and that's been requested quite heavily. So again, if you do, if you do want that, the link is in the description of this video. Again, it's you know, if uh, I'd suggest having a strong background and technical analysis first. It's not a magic pill. Nothing is a magic pill. You know, it's only going to be good as good as the uh, as the user. And if you're not already profitable, it's not. You know, I don't want to. I don't. I, I again, I want to downplay because I don't want. I what what I fear is people getting into like the magic pill mentality, thinking, oh, it's just the indicator that I need and nothing else. And it's like, no. If you don't have risk management, it doesn't matter how good your edge is. You will you will end up losing big at some point in time and that's what most people don't understand about trading and a big 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 point of the um of the trading psychology series that i'm going to be releasing uh saturday uh, yeah I, I think i'll schedule it for saturday and then release one video every saturday um for like the next i don't know a couple months or so i've i've about five or six or maybe seven videos now so i'm i'm getting really excited about it i'm really having a lot of fun recording them as well so uh so hopefully it's well received and uh yeah 
Um, so again, to boil it down on the lower time frames, uh, nothing's changed from these guys as long as we are essentially above this lower block and below this higher block right here. So that would essentially equate to 33.50 to the downside and 37. I'd say 3,700 to the upside. The second that you start closing some two some two hour dildos above 3,700, this uh, I would not want to be short. Um, I would certainly not want to. Be, I mean, even if even if Bitcoin gets back above 3,650, I don't think short is a play. I, I, there, there's going to be too much too much going around on around this range. Um, right now, it does look like, look like a rejection, so I treat it like a rejection. But the second that you actually get back around this range, it's it's like how many times are you gonna brush this area before before it breaks, right? Uh, each and every time that you each and every time that you brush it, each and every time that you stab it, it does get weaker. So let's go check out the longs and shorts of it all. We do have um, almost thirty four thousand open longs, which I think this is this is behind in updating because on yeah on trading view we actually are above thirty four thousand longs right now. Uh, so we are now above this this trend line, which again, this is where I have that denotes, historically speaking, where major, major dumps have happened in Bitcoin's history. Uh, anytime that Bitcoin gets above it, it does, you know, it's, it's it signals that there's too many people on the bus. Now, of course, Bitcoin can spend a lot of time above it, as you can see. I mean, this is, you know, this is multiple weeks over here as it got up to all the way to 40,000. So don't take this as a signal in and of itself. It's to be taken into confluence with the underlying price action. But what it is on my mind, what is on the radar is, now we, there's a lot of people to provide liquidity for some downside is what I'm trying to say as all these margin long positions. Well, what do they, you know, what do they do when they have to get out of that position? Well, sell, you know, they are, they already bought, they already bought Bitcoin is still below. I mean, not even 4,000, but 37 fucking hundred. This is insanity right now. This is absolutely insanity. You don't want above 30,000 open longs when Bitcoin's below a major resistance, like 3,700 in 3,700. I don't even consider like, um, like a huge area. I consider 4,000, a huge area. So you can just imagine that this really provides, uh, a nasty setup in the way that I look at it. Um, also, I believe longs are paying not 0.038%. So it's gone up a little bit in the last day. Uh, compare that with shorts where uh, like you can short for fucking free right now. This is insanity. You, I, this, it's been this way for the last three weeks. I've never seen this before. I can't recall a time where I've actually seen this before. Um, shorts are uh, 25, 25 and a half thousand. We have about 3,000 of those hedged, so really about 22 and a quarter uh, open naked shorts, and that is a severe imbalance. We have literally more, than, we have about 12,000 more uh, open longs net than shorts, which again, a lot of pressure on price action. This, uh, if and when, if and when we do come back down below this horizontal trend line that I have at thirty-three thousand, that's when the dumps typically do occur after Bitcoin has gotten above it. So again, it can spend some time above here, but it is on the radar now. Um, and as Bitcoin is below, you know, even that thirty-seven hundred resistance, which I don't consider like all that strong. I mean, you know, the big one's going to be four thousand. Well, this is kind of a problem kind of a problem uh let's go check out some let's go check out cme so i'm curious what they're doing right now 3580 is the uh, is the tick so we're actually we're we're basically trading parity right now actually uh let's see what is a daily saying yeah daily stoke still headed up on the uh, on cmes they will be getting out of the bearish control region by end of day if they do close here or higher uh daily daily rsi is is it making hidden bearish divergence? I mean, if this is a rejection, if this ends as a rejection today, anywhere below 3630, this will be considered hidden bearish divergence between you know this point on January 9th and the point that we just put up right now. But this is still left of center. I don't necessarily want to call it just yet because as long as Bitcoin's above you know 3500, this is not a re this is not a confirmed rejection or anything like that, and uh, can very easily reaccumulate. But again, overall, look at the volume characteristics of this, um, of, of our CME futures. And you can see that nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right in the overall context of what is this? You know, basically a bear pennant is uh, is the correct terminology, although I don't really, you know, I, I don't care what name you call these things. But you can also see on the four hour total time frame right here, it's this is the, the 200 exponential is just governing price action the whole way through uh, another rejection as of last uh, four hour dildo close we got our four hour four hour stokes uh, actually headed south right now what about our eight hour eight hour are freshly crossed down rejecting the bullish control zone what about the 10 hour 10 hours oh actually freshly crossed down as well i i, I would have thought that they would have been still up so it's still it's just the higher time frames that are still uh, up right now um but again, you know, for CMEs, needs to get above 3,700. Basically, the same price actually as spot right now. You are getting a good, uh, good cross in your exponentials on these higher time frames, so that is worth mentioning. 
And again, as long as Bitcoin's above 35, you know, 15, according to CME futures, I would be more uh, lenient for this guy. I would be more lenient. But again, understand how these time frames are switching around as this consolidate as this consolidation winds up tighter and tighter and tighter it, it you know it's it starts to reveal itself now let's go look at the alts because um or actually before we get to the alts let's go look at spies or sorry before we do all that let's actually go back here uh to see us uh, to to bit mexico and put on a fibonacci retracement um just to kind of show what's going on right now and this this really is helping getting um it really has helped is jesus christ man get your words out properly it really helps get things uh more more accurately you can see that this is just such a obvious uh, obviously algo driven market with the way that all these wicks kind of seem to meet these fibonacci retracements coming off of this dead cat bounce or at least what i'm interpreting as dead cat bounce for now as long as we are below again 3,700 and really 4,000 as well. Um, but you can see that the 0.5 is coming in right around our current major resistance, which would also line up with the, with the descending trend line, which also lines up with the 55 on the monthly, which also lines up with the daily 55 as well. And the 618 lining up with kind of where I'm looking at as as the major signal line. Now, of course, I, I represent it as a zone, so I'd, I'd even include all the, I'd incorporate all the way down to about 3530. Um, as long as Bitcoin is above that area, you know, I I don't necessarily see this as as a rejection just yet, like a fully a full on rejection. But my point is, is that if Bitcoin does break the six one eight, this is going to not spell good things for Bitcoin. Um, by the same token, if it takes out the point five, I. I, you know, yeah, you do have resistance on the way up, but I, I think at that point, you probably have a straight shot, probably to at least 3,900 and probably 4,000. Um, so again, big trades are, are to be made either which way. And of course, you got the 786 down here, holding up this whole consolidation so far, 3350, 3369. As long as Bitcoin's above there, don't want to get too damn uh, bearish. But the second that Bitcoin actually takes out this area, I do believe it's probably going to be a flush down to those mid 2000s as we looked at the volume profile um and as we looked at you know all of our higher uh, our higher time frames as well as the as well as the consolidation which i believe that this is the proper way to be representing it especially with the reaction that we had on friday on this major volume spike here um yeah gbdc is making a sunny triangle which would which would you know insinuate that bitcoin himself the spot charts go all the way down to 3250 and, and kind of find support right there I, I i don't think that that's i think that that's less likely to happen i think that if bitcoin does you know especially reject from the green 55 exponential on the monthly uh it's gonna be another one of those flushes most likely rather than a you know rather than like an ebb and a flow um you know this this consolidation has go been going on for three months and when was the last time that we had actually a three-month consolidation i would argue this whole area uh between september and november or sorry uh, august and november that was a very obvious consolidation within the context of this greater consolidation from most of 2018 but once we got into this more tight formation here that was when it become extremely obvious because this to me was a was a bear trap that failed and got and resulted into a bull trap funnily enough um yeah so again you know in, in a bear market it usually pays to be bearish put it that way and uh what's up um how do i say that tone v good to meet you man good to have you in here is that tone is that tone <laughs> Tone, you're welcome, man. Good to meet you, man. Um, so yeah, let's go check out traditional marks now. Uh, 274 and 10 cents. We do have new highs on spies, and like I said yesterday, I mean, yeah, it, it, things do look mature. Yeah, yeah, my opinion does want to look for local highs, but we took out the high of last week. This thing, I, I, I would, I, again, this is why I need to see confirmation. Just like with Bitcoin, I want to see confirmation of an uptrend first. I need to see confirmation of a downtrend first before get before you know uh, enticing the or or insinuating um beliefs of uh of, of 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 major highs being put in we don't have that we just have a straight up market actually a v bottom essentially uh coming off the lows uh as opposed to bitcoin which is still hanging well below um so again i really don't see too much stopping this thing from you know 278 280 now uh bar you know as as long i mean you could still, I suppose you could still make the same argument. I don't think it happens though. I, I, I think that, I think that spies work that work its way higher. Yeah. The market looks very mature. Yeah. You can say all you want about this. You can say that it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a manipulated rally. It doesn't matter though. You're going to get liquidated if you're fucking short, right? You've been getting liquidated all the time ever since uh, mid December or late December. Um, so be careful, be very, very careful on, uh, on this. This is a great exercise in waiting for confirmation of an actual reversal. Just like, just like how I am with Bitcoin. I want to be bullish. I love titties and else is going to be getting some massive titties at 20,000. So you can trust in that fact that I am, I want to be as bullish as possible, but until we actually get a confirmation of reversal, 
I also don't like living on the streets. So that's, you know, that's a big thing. And over here, yeah, I have my opinion that I would be looking for a local top. I'm not necessarily fully convinced that this thing, you know, marches back on to all time highs or, or, or to prior highs. But hey, for now, there's no re I mean, there, there hasn't been a reason to be short ever since really, I mean, <laughs> I mean, really the whole way through, I suppose. But if, if I were trading this, I'd say 269 was like my last chance for trying out major shorts. As, as soon as the monthly closed above the uh, above the 21 exponential, that was your big tell. I mean, yeah, we are brushing up against the 10 simple right now, but there you go. As long as the monthly is above the 21, I don't treat this as bearish. Uh, that's, that's really all there is to say about it. Um, okay, let's go check out uh, Mr. Ripples. How's he doing over here? Mr. Ripples uh, still filling out this descending triangle. Sorry, better seen on a daily. Yeah, better seen on a daily. And look at that width to the upside. Also rejection of the 21 expansion moving average. Now, of course, there's a lot of hours left in the day um, for this to go. But if we go maybe to a 12 hour, we can see, again, a major wick, decent volume on it in the context of, of the current price action. We even have a rising trend line right here now, don't we? Something like this. So we're even making like a nice little uh, a nice little symmetrical triangle coming off of this downtrend. You know, again, usually the former trend takes over, um, and this will be confirmed if it ends here or lower in two hours and forty one minutes. Now, of course, I'd want to see the daily more accurately speaking, but uh, but with the way that it's currently situated, pressure is on to the downside. We do have daily stokes still actually headed up. What about twelve hour? Twelve hour are headed down, but they are losing momentum. So let's go to maybe a four hour and see what he's doing. Four hours headed up and headed right into the neutral zone. So again, this you know it's making it difficult. Four hour was a clear rejection of the 200 exponential and actually follow through on top of that man these charts are so ugly um but overall for mr ripples as long as you're below 34 and a half cents i don't see any reason to be bullish on this thing uh, by the same token as long as you're above 28 cents it's not really appropriate to be like super bearish looking for you know 20 cents range or, or even a little bit lower um let's go check out uh what about xmr that's that's another top mark cap altcoin right and what do we have here we have the three day being confirmed as a doji a shield but low volume have we taken out the high of that we have actually we have so actually we've, we've actually seen continuation off this um but again you know this ascending trend line still resisting or, or are we jesus man it's for for some reason my trading view is just all nasty uh but yeah as long as long as it's below about 50 bucks it, this i mean we just have another wick above this area again it, everything looks like each other essentially just different you know fractal versions of each other which actually is the right way to, <laughs> which is which is the right fractal uh version you know not necessarily chart, charting formations but you know in, in comparison to each other uh stellar over here same thing but even weaker just extremely ugly extremely 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 ugly um can't fucking buy a rally wow wow reject 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 uh Stellar is just so weak, man. I guess it, it kind of stayed up for so long that uh, now it's joining the rest of the market, I suppose. Uh, even the weekly Stokes still still had a just fucking nosediving right now. Um, you have the same thing even on Bitcoin. The weekly Stokes are actually still angled downwards. Oh, it looks like we just broke uh, 3580. Nice. Um, nicely done, Mr. Bitcoin. So what else we have to look at? Yeah, let's get Mr. Uh, oh, sorry. We got Mrs. Litecoin and Mr. Buterol. And uh, Mrs. Litecoin, again, it's it's this simple. 50, as long as you're below about 49 nine and a half dollars 47 40 49 and a half dollars or something like that uh this is just a retest of the prior consolidation before leading to this more aggressive downtrend now like mrs Litecoin is certainly the best argument for for at the very least a, a big bounce in coming but uh this to me looks like it wants to come down in lower time frames we spoke about this last night i just, i stand by what i said i do believe that this that this guy comes back down at least to about 40 bucks before trying maybe again higher um or or, or at the prior highs and we'll get we should get resolution if the next try gets rejected then yeah i think that this thing falls down with the rest of the market but right now mrs Litecoin, the strongest of the bunch and i believe that this is also event driven so it's like how much weight do you want to put on that i mean not much uh two day delta time frame looks like a rejection of the 89 exponential which is also this critical area about 47 and a half dollars as long as you're below there it's still you know it's still bear market mode but again best you know best argument so far um so yeah let's go look at uh mr buterol mr buterol again same sort of thing as mr bitcoin actually in fact a little bit more exaggerated along this descending trend line right which we have the same sort of consolidation we actually have this trend line going all the way back uh to like the like all the way over here from about 800 dollars in may of last year and this trend line is being flirted with right now however we just got rejected from it on the four hour delta time frame major wick to the upside and follow through to the downside i mean we do have our four hour stokes uh hinting at a lost momentum right now um 
could very easily get another, uh, I mean, that that's not a death sentence in and of itself, but what I am looking at is the four-hour jewel, which, again, this is potentially a perfect setup in the making if the jewel actually if if the light blue actually pops back in and tests this this uh this pink formally and rejects from it that will be a picture perfect signal and these things are i again when you when you get a picture perfect signal i don't believe I don't have an example of, of any time it's been wrong. In fact, the last time that we had one was, I believe, here. So let's see what happened with price action. Oh, that was literally your ultimate top so far at 160, 162 of this bounce. Not bad. So again, if we were to you know do the same sort of signature uh, in this range, you'd imagine that that would probably be the impetus for sending this guy back down to, to, uh, to the lows of this consolidation and probably break it, I'd imagine. Um, so yeah, critical area for Mr. Buterall to break if he wants to, if he wants to actually, you know, have some upwards momentum, bringing him back to around 145 and a half, maybe even 150 would be 120, let's call it 128. If you can close a four hour delta above there, it looks okay. By the same token, don't want to lose this area here at around 117, we'll call it. All right, so back on a Bitcoin, I'll start to wrap this bitch up because I've been speaking for too long already. And we got a uh, four hour delta time frame, just actually having a little bit more continuation off of this last rejection. Again, I actually look at this as a front run, this wick as a front run of this horizontal trend line at 36.50. Uh, Do have some sell pressure right around there. Um, but again, as long as, you know, as long as we're above th that 35.50, 35.30 range, you don't want to, you know, you don't, uh, don't want to front run yourself. I mean, you could very easily reaccumulate around this level. We do have some, we actually do have some good buy pressure um, coming off that area and make another run towards 36.50. And you wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to get caught with a green deal up my bunghole at that point in time. By the same token, I would like to get a position on my streamer account. However, my main, my, my main account did take a position at 36.19. I didn't get the full wick, but you know, don't need to be, don't need to be perfect to make money. And for right now, I, I will be holding this position to be very clear. It will be a directional trade until told otherwise. Um, and I will get out of it. I will actually get out of it if we do tick back above 36.09. Um, why do I say that? Because if, if we tick back above 36.09, I, I think that we probably get another try at this range. And if we do get another try at 36.50, actually, I think that it probably actually breaks the upside if that would happen but hey uh we'll get to that if that actually happens for now pressure is on um as long as we're below 36.50 and 35 uh 30 is the area to hold um in the more conservative sense of course the overall support of this consolidation is still coming in around 33.50 as long as that holds up you know it's still just to be considered consolidation um by the same token if 3700 breaks the upside then uh, then we can talk about this consolidation getting resolved and probably uh, again I, I think that yeah it probably hits 4,000 although there are things along the way at 30 at 3850 3900 but 4,000 is where I'd be looking towards um, at that point in time so again um, trade that as you will this is not financial advice I'm not a financial advisor but I am just sharing exactly my opinions on these exact sort of same situations that you might find yourself in that's going to do it for today I'll be back on likely later today hopefully we can get some price action otherwise Maybe not, I mean, because, you know, you want to actually, I mean, it's just going to be boring for people, right, if, if we say the same thing over and over again. Uh, but for now, uh, looking like Bitcoin's winding up and with uh, with a catalyst later today with um, SIBO futures closing, could be in for some fun. Again, that's going to do it for today, guys, and I'll see you later. Take care and pleasure to speak with you.